It was the beginning of fall and my dad had a little over a month off work because he had just had a hernia surgery. I'm 19 but I'm currently unemployed and not in school. Though, I'm doing my best to work on remedying that, but it's besides the point. The point is, I was free to come along, and I accompanied him to a little over a week at the beach in North Carolina. We had been staying at the beach for a few days, and I had been spending most of my time in the indoor pool. Now, the place we stay at is directly on shore, so all I had to do was step outside and walk down a ramp, and there was the ocean. The thing is, this beach wasn't far down from the local pier, so it's basically near public access. This made it crowded, especially since there were some huge waves going on at the time that we were there, so there was a decent surf crowd. Now, I don't mind big crowds when I'm with friends or family, but my dad was fishing most of the time, and I'm not a big fan of shore fishing when tons of people are around. Kids play in the water. People walk into your line or chase fish away. It's not fun. Plus, the seagulls can be a pain. So basically, I didn't want to go on the beach during the day. But at night, I was game. I loved walking the beach just after the sunset. There were barely any people. Not feeling self-conscious or anxious or worrying dealing with my anxiety much at all. Just me, the beach, and the occasional ghost crab that I would catch take a picture of and let go. This particular night, I was sad. I was worried about my friend and his well-being because of some personal things going on in his life, and I was scared that he was going to get hurt, especially when almost the entirety of our friend group was praising him for it and telling me that I worry too much, which perhaps I do, but I really care about his well-being, and I wasn't too pleased with having my fear shrugged off. So, to get my mind off of things, I walked further than I usually do. I decided to walk all the way down to the pier by myself, ignoring common sense because at that point, I had bigger issues to worry about. At least, to me I did. It was barely light enough out to see without a flashlight, and yes, you were by the pier and the area surrounding it, which was weird because usually the moonlight was brighter. The night just felt stranger than usual, and I was slightly on edge. It was hard to see people and the beach was almost completely empty. Most of the time, there are at least a dozen people walking up and down the shore at this time, since it was only about 10 or 11 p.m., but not that night. It was a vacant from what I could see, but still, I kept walking. Now, I'm not the tiniest of girls, I'm about 5'9 and weigh 170. So I honestly wasn't that worried. I'm a decent runner and I knew that if there was any danger, I could scream to the workers who were no doubt closing the pier up for the night, since I'm pretty sure they close at about 10. And even if not that, plenty of beach houses align that shore, and you can hear noises pretty easily. And if all else failed, like I said, I'm a decent runner. That became less and less comforting though. Because, as I walked, I looked to my right and noticed two hooded figures just sitting in the sand up by the dunes. They were almost invisible in the spot that they were in, and I only noticed them because of their cigarettes. They wore black hoodies and long pants, and even what looked like shoes. I didn't flat out make it obvious that I was staring at them. I had a hoodie on as well, and I just peeked at them from the corner of my eye to the best of my ability. I found it out that people were wearing what seemed to be tennis shoes or boots on the beach, knowing that sand would get in there. I shrugged it off and kept going, my mind going back to my friend in no time. I was far closer to the pier when I stopped, not that far from it. It was pretty so, I decided to walk up the sand a bit, to a higher vantage point to take in the view, when I noticed another figure under the pier. The pillars of the pier are tall and no one was around. The figure was facing my direction and just standing. He was dressed like the other guys, hoodie, and seeming to wear shoes. Now, this was an even stranger spot to be wearing shoes in, since it was on the wet sand, edging the line that the tide was reaching and retreating from. 
It seemed like we just watched each other for a long moment, before he suddenly started sprinting towards me. Now, I was close to the pier, but still, a good distance away from being underneath it. And still, he was fast, and it cleared a few yards in only seconds. I had froze and was terrified, and I had just tensed up. I was about to turn, about to start running from this crazy dude, when out of nowhere he spun around on his heel, mid-sprint and ran back under the pier. He disappeared under the darkness and I didn't see him. I didn't know if he was on drugs or some college or high school kid thinking it would be funny to scare the living crap out of a girl, but I wasn't sticking around to find out. I turned around and began quickly walking back towards where I was staying, looking over my shoulder every two seconds. I swear that I heard laughter, but it may have just been in my head. I was back down the beach and just reaching the halfway point back to my place when I saw those two same guys from before, still in their spot, having not moved an inch. About 15 to 30 minutes had probably passed and I don't know if their posture had even changed. I had calmed down and was processing what had happened to the pier by this point, but seeing those two again didn't help my remaining unease. I just reminded myself that lots of people like the beach at night, and there was nothing to worry about, and I kept walking. What really set me on edge again is when I had walked several yards past them back on the beach. I had got an anxious feeling and I looked back, and realized that they were trailing behind me about a yard back. And the weirder thing... When they realized that I had stopped in my tracks and was watching them, they turned on their heels and walked the other way. It was mid-stride too, just like the runner. I have no explanation for this crazy story. If the running guy knew the other two, if it was just a random coincidence that I ran into three figures fully dressed for a freaking winter on the beach with shoes on, maybe they were all high off their butts, I don't know. All I know is that the only thing I got out of that experience is a somewhat interesting if confusing story and added caution when alone. I live in a relatively safe city in Scotland. Though I have had several really otter scary encounters since I moved here four years ago. I'm a short 29 year old woman and I work in a pub so I often get out of work late. On the weekends, I usually head home around 2 a.m. I never wear my headphones when headed home at night, so this particular night was no different than usual. Alarm set, doors locked and checked, said goodbye to my colleague and then we went our separate ways to get home. I usually cross a grocery store car park to get home, it's well lit, and that night something struck me as odd. There were a couple of cars that were parked there which is normal, but something just felt off. I looked over my shoulder and clocked a guy in a hat walking a distance behind me. This wasn't weird, but I decided to keep an eye on him nonetheless. I exited the car park to the main road that I lived off of, but still I had a good mile or so to go before I reached my flat. I checked over my shoulder again and sure enough, this guy was walking the same direction as me. The distance between us was starting to close, so I decided to cross the road. I usually did at this point anyway. Looking over my shoulder, I was able to not only look for traffic coming, but was also able to keep an eye on him. I crossed the road and didn't bother to look back for a few minutes, assuming that he had stayed on the other side. But I began to hear footsteps approaching. I glanced over my shoulder and saw this guy was about 20 feet behind me. I had a soft drink in a glass bottle in my bag and figuring I was overreacting but better safe than sorry, I stuck my hand into the bag and I gripped the bottle. Another 45 seconds and this guy was close enough to touch me, but he slows to my pace and says, Hello, uh, how are you? I ignore him and I don't respond. I long ago gave up on pretenses of being polite if I feel uncomfortable. A stranger's feelings matter less than my feeling of safety in any given situation. But he persists in talking to me. Hey, are you going to work? No. I was being short with him. Are you going home? Yes, I said coldly. Do you live in this direction? 
I just looked at him. He tried again. Do you live off of this road? Where do you live? Do you live close by? I didn't respond and slowed my pace, letting him walk on. I was still gripping the glass bottle, ready to hit him with it should he try anything. He tried to slow down so I would catch up with him, but I slowed down so much that I was barely walking. He was maybe 300 yards away at this point, and he simply stopped and turned around, watching me and waiting for him to catch up with me. I reached into my pocket with my free hand and I tried my phone. Of course, of course my phone was dead. I figured it would last the walk home, but my dodgy battery had other ideas. Surprisingly though, I wasn't afraid. He had started walking again, but still quite slowly. He looked over his shoulder again after another minute and I seized the opportunity. There is a path to a block of flats that was obscured by a tall hedges so I left behind them. I waited for nearly 10 minutes, never letting go of that bottle the entire time. I peeked around the hedges to make sure that he was there. I peeked behind bins and bus stops to make sure that he wasn't hiding in wait. But as far as I could tell, I lost him. Maybe he didn't mean anything by this, but if you suspect a woman is afraid of you and she was walking alone at night, don't speak to her. It will not help. Especially, don't ask her where she lives repeatedly. I was not drunk. I did not appear to be drunk or need any help. I was just walking home as I ordinarily would. I am, however, inclined to believe that he had bad intentions. I would rather be too cautious than not. My story begins in the summer of 2012. The first encounter happens before I'm leaving to go out of town for a summer study program. At the time, my mom didn't have AC, which meant that we would leave the front door open as we watched TV before bed. Not smart, but the breeze was nice and we were naive. My friend was over and she was coming to drop me off and we fell asleep, with the door open. We both woke up and discussed how we had weird dreams of a large man walking through the house. That's all we remember. The next thing you know, my friend is missing cash and cigarettes. Now, no one in the house smokes. It was my mom, my sister, and I. And we destroyed the house searching for both cash and cigs. We were terrified to tell my mom that we had forgot to shut the door. And my mom felt awful that my friend's cash went missing. So replaced it and we just forgot about it. I returned from the program about two months later. I was in my room, it was around 2am, and my mom habitually fell asleep on the living room floor after working a long shift. I was texting a friend about a fight I was having with my boyfriend at the time, and then I hear something odd. My mom has jingles on the back door at this time, and now forever, because my sister and I at the time would sneak out and it's how she would catch us. I listened to the jingle start shaking, and I realize the back door is opening and closing. I start to freeze and I text my friend. I think someone just walked into my house. Now my mom's house is a ranch in a suburb. A small, cozy house and you learn everyone's footsteps. My mom's are light, quick and shuffled. The person walking through my house from the back door has heavy steps and they're trying to be quiet. I hear them open, look through the drawer, scatter metal in the kitchen. I worry. Did they just try to search for a knife? I don't have the courage to scream or face the culprit. I text my friend to call 911 immediately. She thinks I'm teasing or being dramatic. I stop texting and listen to the person go into my sister's room, and it's next to mine, and I can see in my window that they had flipped down her lights for what felt like forever. Thankfully, she was at her friend's having a sleepover. I begin to worry that they were going to open my door and come in my room next. They didn't. This whole time, my heart is racing and I'm frozen. They walk over to the living room, where my mom is still asleep on the floor. And from what I remember, I think they just watched her. Eventually, they left. I immediately call my mom who was feet away from me and ask if it was just her walking around. She asked what? I immediately start to have a panic attack, scream for her to run to my room, and frantically explained what happened. 
Finally, the police department called me because my friend did call them and ask if everything is okay. I shouted on the phone what happened, and they sent over the police. The police did a search around my house and saw footprints in the mud right outside of my bedroom window. They also asked if my mom and sister and I had partners or exes that may want to stalk us. We all hadn't at the time. I did admit to what had happened two months prior and it could have been the same person preying on us. We were all so freaked out about the incident, but it doesn't end there. Months later, my mom again has fallen asleep with the TV on in the living room. By now, we have a paranoid system of making sure the doors and windows are all locked. We have thick window curtains too, but sometimes with the sun setting, you forget to put them down. My mom is half awake watching TV when she noticed a reflection in the window. She stares at it and thinks it's the TV glare, and then it waves at her. All of a sudden, I hear her screaming and stomping out the door. I chase after her. She is out the door chasing a giant white van. The culprit got away, and my mom chased them. I had to yell at my mom that it probably was not the smartest to, one, call the police immediately, two, open your door to them, and three, chase after her without any protection because who knows. But luckily, they left her alone. We never found out who it was, and since then, we have never had another incident that we know of. But whenever I visit home, there's always that eerie, unspoken paranoia. This story happened when my best friend and I were about 15 years old. We had to take an important exam at the end of the year, so we attended some private sessions in order to prepare. Because of this, we could only hang out on Saturdays after 5pm. We were at the mall and after a bit of window shopping, she asked me to come outside in the park so we could smoke a cigarette. She had took it from her mother, but I didn't smoke and I never liked it. I accepted it as I was used to her requirement. So, we were in the mall's park, walking while she was smoking that cigarette. It was like 6pm, but it was already dark outside, as this happened in the wintertime. Let me describe you the place where we were. This was a large park, full of trees and big, rectangular-shaped bushes. On the side aisle, there were some restaurants, a full 10-meter gap, an exit to a dark street, and the parking lot. Another big space and a place for skating. We thought that we were 100% safe, as we were still walking on the mall's property. We arrived near that strange exit, when a man approaches us and asks for a cigarette. My friend tells him that she doesn't have any other cigarettes, because she got it from someone else too. He seemed to be in his late 40s, was unshaved and wearing a red hood which almost covered his eyes. I tell him that we have to go, to which he responds with some incoherent words. We both knew that something was off, so we made some steps back. Why are you so scared? I won't do anything to you, he said as he was approaching. Silence. Don't worry, I've met a lot of girls like you, he said, and then he started to mumble other words that I couldn't understand. We didn't know what to do. We didn't know if he had any weapons. Behind us was a big bush. In front of us was him. If we chose to run in different directions, he would be able to catch at least one of us and probably take her with him. There weren't many people, but the ones who were passing by didn't seem to care about our terrified looks. My friend kept repeating that we were sorry and that we couldn't help him, and I think one of the people walking by hurt her. Fortunately, another man who looked a lot more younger and stronger than the creep stopped and asked him why he was bothering us, but he wasn't given any response. My friend took the chance, crushed her cigarette with her foot as quickly as possible and started running. I, as a complete idiot, remained frozen a few more seconds and I looked in our savior's eyes, and then I started sprinting. We didn't stop running until we were sure that they couldn't see us anymore. Both of them left and we got back into the mall safely, and we never told anyone about this encounter. So, the creep from the mall, please, let's not meet again.